Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're off to New York State. We do go there pretty often, but this one, folks, very twisting case. Twisting and twisted. Bizarre, to say the least, and it involves the two things I am always thinking about. Sandwiches and Halloween. This old video is about Elizabeth Lamont, a young woman who lived in upstate New York. She had everything going for her, till a strange series of events led to a game of cat and mouse. He said, she said, and a horror at the spookiest time of the year. This is Kitchen Nightmares, but to the end degree, whatever that means. Before we get into it, please subscribe to see new videos every single week. Now, let's give it a go. Today's story takes us to the very up, up, up state of New York, to the twin cities of Gloversville and Johnstown, sitting right on the edge of the Adirondacks. Chillin', about 50 minutes from Albany, state capital, combined Gloversville and Johnstown have a population of about 25,000 people. Johnstown, named after William Johnston, an Irishman in the British Army, and he was an officer during the French and Indian War, a man who helped foster peaceful relations between the Native Americans and the colonists, becoming very, very wealthy in the process, of course. Meanwhile, old Glovey Gloversville over here? Named after gloves. Literally named after gloves. I mean, they just call gloves the biz. Because it was a hub, it was downtown Gloves Central. It's where pretty much all the gloves in America were made. Better, like a hundred years ago. Overall, it seems like a nice enough place to live among the beautiful Adirondack Mountains. But that's not enough, folks, because get this, Johnstown was voted among the eight most charming cities in the Adirondack Mountains. Now, I could get cynical and say, well, how many cities are there in the actual Adirondack Mountains? But I won't. Johnstown, look at you. Now, if you were driving between Johnstown and Gloversville and you were feeling like a little bit hungry, you might think to yourself, man, I could wolf down a sandwich. And no better place than local number nine. They made sandwiches, salads, and subs, oh my. And working there in the year 2019 was Elizabeth Alley Cat Lamont. Alley was born and raised in Gloversville, 22 years old in the October of 2019. Daughter of Krista and Sherman Lamont, growing up in the town with her sisters. And Alley was very close with her family, tight-knit, much like the deli, which was considered a family affair, ran by Georgios Cacavelos, owner, and James Duffy, the manager. Ali liked her job. She was good at it. She was very, you know, good with people. Always real ready to help you with a big grin on her face. A down-to-earth person with a close circle of friends. And she'd been working in the deli for about eight months by this stage. As the summer heat waned in early autumn, Ali began a relationship with William Deming. And things were going well as the fall began. The air cooled, the leaves went from green to brown, and orange and black became the colours of the night. New York has a long and storied history of the haunted, from the Headless Horseman to the ghosts of Fort William Henry. But as October 31st approached, the most frightening thing was Ali's sudden disappearance. At approximately 10pm on October 29th, two days before Halloween, the Gloversville Police Department received a call. Ali hadn't been heard from in over a day. It was Ali's sister who had called. It wasn't like her to not check in. And now at first, you know, she'll turn up. No biggie. She lived in Gloversville. She worked in Johnstown. She's probably just hanging out with friends. And those two cities, they have actually much lower crime rates than the national average by like half. So what could really go wrong? But at the same time, in the police's mind, it was that one st statistic of how safe this place was that actually made people worry and kind of like stand out. And that same night, another call came in inqu inquiring about, about Ali Lamont. See, Ali had been sharing an apartment with her childhood friend, Jenny, and Jenny's son. Jenny also hadn't seen Ali since the previous day. Now, it was worrying. Jenny hadn't seen Ali since she had popped into the local Nine Deli to drop off her phone charger. When Jenny texted Ali later that day, she got no response. And so, 24 hours later, she was calling the cops. The cop's first port of call was her work. She hadn't been seen since leaving when her shift had finished at around 8pm. That's what her co-worker said. Then the police went to her boyfriend, William Deming, who was also out looking for her. No one had seen her in this small town. It's in the middle of a lot of wilderness though. Ebola was put out statewide. Be on the lookout. 
We are at the Local 9 Deli, also known as the Smokehouse Barbecue and Specialty Sub. It's in the Adirondack Plaza here at the corner of Townsend Ave and uh, North Comrie Ave here in the city of Johnstown. That is where Elizabeth Lamont worked. Uh, and that's where she was last seen, police say, on Monday around 8 o'clock at night. Some people, however, would very much not want anybody to be on the lookout. But if you didn't want to be tracked, you didn't want people watching you virtually, what would you do? Personally, I use NordVPN every single day. You know, when I'm researching these kind of stories, true crime topics, I always kind of want to go as close to the source as I possibly can, and that is nearly always local news, whatever local news serves the area. But pfft, most of those websites are unavailable to me here in Ireland. This content is not available in this location message is something I am all too familiar with. Or should I say I was? You know, I used a few different VPN providers before I landed on Nord and since landing on Nord, I never switched. And so I thought to myself, it doesn't get any better than this. Having a VPN I can rely on, I can access content anywhere in the world and no one can track, but then, to my great surprise, it does get better. I just couldn't believe it. Nord doesn't only keep your location safe and secure, hiding your IP address. Nord also has incredible features like Nord's Mesh Net, where you can safely connect to any other device in the world. Or how about a password manager, data scanner, or get this, Nord's Trek Protection that keeps you safe from any hackers, malicious websites, trackers, phishing, ransomware, all that, no more. Nord's goal is to make the internet better than it is today, free from online threats, surveillance, censorship, things I think, you know, we can all kind of like get behind. And so, become safer with a click by downloading NordVPN today. And if you use my special link, that is nordvpn.com slash that chapter, you can get an exclusive deal. Exclusive means it just for you because Nord told me you're their favorite. You can get a NordVPN two year plan. And also if you use my special link, you get four months for free. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Nord is your like all in one internet, keep you safe, private thingy. So once again, go to nordvpn.com slash that chapter. And if you pick up a two year plan, you get an extra four months for absolutely free. Thank you so much to Nord for supporting that chapter. Now let's get back to it. Ali still hadn't been seen by the 30th of October, the day before Halloween. And now serious fears were, were really beginning to, to percolate. Now, Ali hadn't planned on leaving. She never said she was going anywhere at all. She was due to go trick-or-treating in a couple of days with Jenny and her young son. And when last seen by Jenny, she was fine. So her current boyfriend seemed clear. His alibi was drinking in a local graveyard with friends and that matched. Her best friend, ditto. Work said she had left by all accounts, but had never arrived home. Though she had closed up with manager James Duffy, and police had yet to speak with him, along with the owner of her workplace, Georgios Kakavelos. But Ali did have trouble previously with an, with an ex-boyfriend, a guy named Tyler. Tyler, a bit of a troublemaker, um, before and since. But what the police specifically wanted to speak to him about was a domestic, a domestic report. This had been like about two months before she disappeared. As you can probably guess, it wasn't one of them, wasn't one of them good relationships. When the police went to speak with him, he was actually nowhere to be found and it took him a little bit to wrestle him down. After tracking and tracking, they eventually spoke with Tyler. Now, as I said, Tyler had a few run-ins with the law and a few after all this, domestic disorders, probationary issues and such, and a police report had been filed back in August. See, she had shown up at Tyler's door and she had shown up hot. You know, she was pissed. She was pissed over the fact that she had heard Tyler was dating one of her friends. Which is a bit like, come on now. Tyler said the marks she received on her arms were from him attempting to restrain her. Tyler told the police that after that, he never spoke to her again, blocked her on socials, and blocked her phone number. And then once again, what Tyler was up to the day she was last seen, he was alibied out. He, he had no time unaccompanied or unaccounted for, so, Again, the police, you know, were most likely thinking, okay, she, she closed up in the sandwich shop. She was going home when something happened. Something not good. It's Halloween. You got witches, you got ghouls, you got monsters. After Tyler, the police spoke once again with William, the current boyfriend. He was cleared, though he did tell the police she was depressed, but her insurance couldn't cover treatment. Then they finally spoke with her manager and the owner of the deli, James and Georgios. They were both brought in. 
See, Ali was due to finish in local number 9 at 8pm, so James would have been the last guy to catch a glimpse of her. But did he see more? Did he see something which could, you know, tell them where she'd gone? What had happened to her? I'm an alcoholic, and I'm a drug addict. Do not tell my boss. <laughs> James is one of them, one of them weirdos. Listen, I want you to find my friend. I want you to bring me a worker back to work, and I want you to sit there and Giorgio, on the other hand, was a Greek immigrant, a married father of four, and had opened a number of sub shops in the upstate New York area. A diner in Gloversville, a sandwich shop in Saratoga Springs, and local number nine had been in operation since late 2018. Now, Giorgio, he he wasn't like the day-to-day -day running guy. He, he was the big, he was the owner, the big picture guy. He left at all, pretty much to James, the manager. James and Giorgio had been kind of like buddies for years, going back years. Giorgio's had kind of taken James under his wing. James had kind of a bit of a rough, troubled upbringing. When brought in, James seemed intoxicated on alcohol or something else. Giorgio's, however, was able to say that she had left that evening. He had been there and he had lent her five hundred dollars. What time she left? I would gotta say anywhere between seven and twenty. She said, "Thank you, George." She said, "Thank you, yes." I said, "Thank you, George." I said, just be good. I yelled, just be good. And then she left. See, Ali was hoping to actually get her own uh, place to live. She was living with her best friend, and it was great, but it was her best friend and her best friend's young son, and in all fairness, it could be a little bit crowded. The police searched the deli, which was, in fact, at that very moment, undergoing renovation, if you can believe that. The place was being torn down and heavily cleaned. Especially because on the night Ali had last been working, they had accidentally made shite of the soda machine and soda syrup went everywhere. But they just wanted her back. They did so, or Giorgio's especially did say though she did seem troubled, she had her own issues, much like William said, so I'm kind of making sense here. But she was troubled, girl. I felt bad for her when I treated her literally as a daughter of mine, coming up of my life, she said. Then the interrogation got weird. James, or Jim as they call him, seemed intoxicated. So they asked Georgios, do you think he might have done something? Was James intoxicated for any particular reason? He was there when she had last been seen and he self-admittedly had substance abuse issues. Not a good mix. The one thing we never talked to you about is, do you think Jim had anything to do with this between us? I really don't think so. He definitely had the thoughts. Like anything that harmed to her or uh, do anything to her, anything like that. They were friends. They were bodies. No, George said, no, no way, Jose. Or whatever the Greek version of Jose is. Are you saying for Jim? Are you what sense you mean? Like maybe he had something to do with it, and you just don't want to come forward. It almost seemed though like George was covering for James, but just like how. He, he wouldn't really let the police look through his phone, his texts between him and James. He was like, James? He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Things seemed weird between the two of them, and most certainly they were hiding something. The following day, they re-interviewed James Duffy, once he had sobered up. At first, he just wanted her back. Helpful, helpful Jimmy. I want you to find her, okay? Trust me, I do. Because I want my friend back, okay? Not only was she my friend, she was a hell of a worker. I actually never would play something happened to this girl. You gotta tell us. Are you this guy that was around for an accident? And like, you feel awful about it, but you're about to tell us? Or are you this guy that... No, no, you know, bro, listen. She was sorry when I seen her last. I tell you this much, I don't know where she is. Then it seemed like he wanted to tell the police something. I feel like you're holding back. I don't, I don't know. Something went too far that night and then I'm trying to figure it out. You have the answer to the puzzle here. I need to clear my mind. Okay. In fact, he made a demand that he wanted a, like a document or, or something signed by the district, the DA, the district attorney. If he said something, he wanted to be immune from prosecution. As you can probably tell, James was not a bright spark. He believed that if he told a little something something about maybe what actually happened to Ali or what he knew about what happened to Ali. He could just, you know, sign that and he'll be scot free. I want it signed by the DA. And everything that you guys leave me alone. I walk out of here 
you put me on a bus and I can go. I don't want to promise you anything I can't. So that's why I'm talking to you. Because she overdosed and she's someplace. I can tell you that we can get that. Obviously, if she's chopped up into pieces, you know, it's different. The detectives essentially tricked James into telling his truth. They didn't lie to him, they didn't promise him anything, they didn't say he'd be on a bus and walking out of here if he told them what really happened, they didn't tell him anything like that, they just let him make those assumptions in his own mind. <laughs> you don't even know where to go. James Duffy spoke about what really happened. They gave me $500 to do all these drugs. Mm -hmm. So that way I could build up the courage to do this. Bought me a case of beer. He told the police that after they closed up shop at 7 p.m., Ali had been in the back just cleaning up, you know, getting ready, getting ready to finish up. And while she was there at the sink, James had walked up behind her with an aluminium baseball bat and struck her in the head repeatedly. I don't think the DA will sign shit. He then said Georgios put a bag over her head, choked her, and finished her off by hitting her with a hammer. She kept twitching. She cut up her, you know, in one piece. Then James and Georgios put her body in the back of Georgios' small Volkswagen, and they dropped her body off in a wooded area east of town. They returned the following night, which was the night she was reported missing, and buried her body under concrete and fertilizer. It was Georgios' idea to murder her. He, Georgios had paid off. James paid him off with money, with drugs, and with booze. It was like a mur murder for hiring, getting James to, well, launch the first blow at her. After that, they spread soda syrup all over the floor to not only cover the blood, but also give them a reason to need to clean up and renovate. At one point, George Jose had to go to Walmart to get more supplies to clean up. James did take them to where she was, and they also recovered the murder weapon and other cleaning supplies that had been dumped. Ali had been unceremoniously buried in this muddy, marshy area just off the highway. The police were completely shocked when James told them this. Like, why? Why did they just snap and brutally murry, murder her in the back of their own store? Georgios was soon then brought in. Yesterday, you didn't read my rights. The fact you read my rights today, well, that's a sign to me. You're taking the conversation now from our general to what he said versus what I said. I'm not going to do that without an attorney. Can I call my attorney first? Put your hand behind your back. Do you understand that? No. Yep. You're right. Certainly not a happy ending by any means. 22-year-old Elizabeth Lamont was last seen Monday night around 8, failing to return home after her shift at local number 9, a deli in Johnstown. Her disappearance started a multi-agency search involving state and local police. There are easily 40 law enforcement personnel actively working the case. Four days. It was four days after Lamont went missing that they found her body off exit 13 on I-87 in a wooded area in Malta. 34-year-old James Duffy of Johnstown and 51-year-old Georgios Cacavellos of Boston Spa sit in Saratoga County Jail tonight without bail. Both men charged with murder and concealment of a corpse. The motive for this brutal act. Money, or rather, fraud. Georgios was committing fraud. He was paying all his employees under the table, and he wasn't paying them the full amount either. He was keeping everything off the books. Georgios had a history of shady business practices, and when Ali threatened to make this public, and she had filed a state labor complaint against him, when an investigator with the Department of Labor stopped in unannounced to the store one time, she told him everything, all the shady business practices that had been going on how he wasn't keeping logs of their hours. He kept pretty much zero financial records from the store. When this got out, Georgios was not best pleased, not too keen on that. An investigation had begun by the Department of Labor into his shit. He couldn't have that at all. And so Georgios was believing Ali was a traitor. She was turning, you know, everybody in the store in this little small family run establishment that was not family at all. Um, he believed, you know, she was a traitor, she was turning everybody against him, she was telling, you know, the Department of Labor about all the really shady, illegal shit he was doing. 
she had to go. Georgios, in fact, owed the state of New York 70 grand and the IRS 120 grand. This is a real episode of Kitchen Nightmares. You fucking dick! James Duffy pleaded guilty to second degree murder, taking a deal and agreeing to testify against Georgios. In return, he was sentenced to 18 years to life. Your testimony was chilling. Uh, and the lack of emotion that you showed in describing the testimony is equally chilling. Dragging her body and driving her to the exit 13 Cloverleaf and burying her in the dirt uh, at midnight on Halloween. And Duffy's statement to the court today just before he was sent to prison for murdering Lamont, two sentences. Nothing I could say is going to bring back her. Um, Elizabeth isn't coming back, unfortunately, so I'm just going to say I'm sorry. Georgios pleaded not guilty, however, to the murder of uh, Alvi Lamont. In fact, in his defense, at trial, he said he was there that day, the day she was killed. He was in, in his, his deli. But, you know, after he closed in, he walked in the back and he saw James beating Ali to death with a baseball bat. And Georgios <gasps> was shocked, couldn't believe this. He was blown out of his mind. Then he said, James gave him a weird look, he had wild eyes and said, if you don't help me clean up this, you're next. So George is fearing for his life and his family's life. He kind of had to help, you know, get rid of the body. Um, in fact, he didn't even want to go to the Walmart to get more stuff, but he was, you know, James said he'd kill him if he didn't, so. James Duffy was the key witness, right, in all of this. And of course, the defense was saying, you can't trust James. He is, to use their words, a crackhead. You can't believe him. And now the government, through the use of a drunken crackhead, wants to take all of that away from him. Throughout Mr. Takavelos' 30-ish years in this country, he hasn't been perfect, but boy oh boy, he hasn't been James Duffy. In reality, Georgios knew James looked up to him. Georgios had always taken care of him. He was a good guy to James. And James, with his substance abuse issues, was very manipulatable to Georgios. And so he got him to do his dirty work for him. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, no doubt about it, I have to that I have an opinion. James Duffy is no angel. But this is a murder for hire case. And you don't hire an angel to do the devil's job. James Duffy was a perfect person for the defendant to hire. A key piece of evidence against Mr. Cacavelos was indeed when he left the deli after killing Ali. He would say he had left to go get more cleaning supplies and he was in terror for his life. James said he would kill him if he didn't go get these cleaning supplies. But CCTV and a receipt were found and it didn't look like he'd gone to the Walmart in duress. In fact, he'd gotten himself a tasty little treat of an Almond Joy and some reading material, a little magazine to flick through. Not a great look. That's how the jury saw it too, when he was found guilty. And as to count one, murder in the first degree, how do you find? Guilty. Count three, conspiracy in the second degree. Guilty. Not only has he been charged with first degree murder and second degree conspiracy, but also concealment of a human corpse and tampering with physical evidence. Giorgio Skakavelos was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Who goes to work thinking your boss is going to kill you? All that Elizabeth Lamont wanted was to get a paycheck and not be paid under the table. How twisted uh, and exceedingly evil Mr. Kakavalos is for taking what would ordinarily be a very simple administrative act and pay her like she wanted to be paid, taking out her FICA and her taxes so that she could be a law-abiding hard-working member of our community. The defendant is so callous, so greedy, and so self-centered that instead of legitimizing Ms. Lamont's employment and simply giving her a payroll check, he decides in a very diabolical, conspiratorial way to kill her. And the proof showed that she died of severe skull fractures and brain damage. And so ends the story of local number nine and the shady business practices that were going on 
within. Uh, it's kind of a pity, apparently the sandwiches there were quite good. Family Run was how Georges wanted all his employees and everybody worked there to think it was. You know, we're just, we're all in this together, guys. We're one little family, we take care of each other. That's what he used to get away with underpaying his employees and taking advantage of everything, not paying his taxes and doing all sorts of shady shit. Ali said no, and she was right to. She didn't owe him anything, she was right to call him out on his illegal shit he was doing, and he was screwing everybody over. And so Georgios was simply not having that, and he got James Duffy, seems like an idiot, to kill. Georgios did seem like a kind of sleazy sack of shit, but a killer? There you go. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it really means the absolute world to me that you're here watching this old video. Um, yeah, I guess it wraps up this one. So here, listen, uh, I'll see you real soon in the next old video. Please check out the That Chapter podcast. Actually, every new episode out every single Monday. It's completely separate now. I think it's got a completely separate thing to the channel now, so give it a go if you're interested. But until the next one, please take care of each other and yourselves, because I love you. Bye, kid.